In this series, lowimpact.org and the Open Credit Network talks with people working to build a mutually owned, democratic, decentralised economy that builds community and doesn't destroy nature. We want to increase collaboration to bring about system change. Find links to the sites mentioned in the videos in the description below. Join the conversation by liking, commenting and subscribing to our channel. Today I'm interviewing Lawrence Anderson of TradeSwap, a mutual credit network in Australia. I'm, I'm very interested in what you're up to, Lawrence, because as you know, a group of us are trying to set up a, a mutual credit network in the UK with a view to building a global credit commons. Now, if viewers or listeners or readers or however you're consuming this, if you don't know what mutual credit is, there's a link in the description. Uh, but just very quickly, um, businesses go into a directory, they get an account, uh, when you sell, your account goes up, and when you buy, it goes down. But that's just numbers in account, in an account, not money. Uh, there's a limit to how far you can go into credit or debit, uh, and there are more details, but that's it for the fundamentals. A moneyless trading system that doesn't involve interest and doesn't require banks. Hi, Lawrence. Hi, Dave. So, Welcome. Um, so, uh, First, if I could ask you a few questions about your business, TradeSwap, and yep. then um, I'm really interested in how you've been doing since lockdown and, and whether people in Australia see the benefits of being able to trade without money when there's no money around. Uh, so, um, first of all, well, where are you exactly in Australia? Righto. So, I'm situated in a township called Pakenham. Uh, we are in the state of Victoria. Um, 50 kilometers east of Melbourne. Okay. You, do, you don't call it mutual credit, do you? Uh, barter. Uh, barter. It's a, it's a barter network or and the, the companies are called trade exchanges. Trade exchanges. So, so recipro reciprocal trade exchanges. Yeah. I'm going to say that the cash is king, but barter is smarter. Yeah, it's it's um I know there's a there's a big barter industry in the States, but it's not barter, is it? You don't have to find somebody who's got what you want. And, no, it's and, it's not it's not a one on one. No, but I can understand the misconception in the word bartering. It's it's definitely not a one on one. It's the same as your mutual credit, if you like to call it's it. It's the same idea, yeah. yeah. When, same when, same concept, yeah. Yeah. It's just a different just terminology. Yeah. Yeah. When did you when did you start? Okay, so our company was uh, formed, I formed it in 1985, actually. So we are the oldest trade exchange in Australia, possibly the world, not sure. Barter Card says that they are the oldest in 91, but uh, we registered our company in 1985. Okay. So I let them think they're the oldest, but actually we are. So how many businesses use your network then at the moment, would you say roughly? Well, at the moment, we've got, a, I suppose, it's a closer to... It, uh 1500 roughly 1500 yeah. and are they are they do they do they are they just registered registered businesses or sole traders and individuals well, well, both, as well both no both both and if both. they're individual i mean so so there's no problems with the consumer credit regulations in australia when no, it comes to individual. no no not from that point because we can form we can form uh with every you know credit financial you know services you know Compliance, we, we comply with everything. Every every cent of our transactions right, so is fully is fully tracked. Every cent, every cent, and you can see from and it's it's all there without having to log in. It's all there. A hundred dollar transaction yields a, a cash fee or and a trade fee of this and that, and you can see where every cent goes. So do individuals? So, so do individuals have to earn first before they in, in rather than str go straight into debit? Do they have to earn some credits first? Well, on well, it depends. Um, we have a a join. If they come in and join, they get a two hundred dollar available overdraft when they join. But then, yes, primarily that, they yeah. need to then raise credit. On your help page, I see that you've you've added a step by step guide to everything that a new member can do on the site. And it looks at first sight, it looks really complicated. But if you follow it, it's quite sim simple and step by step. And it shows yeah. people how to set up their profiles and add images and change passwords, etc. And I see on yeah. your website there's a there's a one-off $220 joining fee, which is half yeah. cash and half mutual credit. It's Correct. Half trade credit. And then there's a 3.3% transaction fee for sellers and a 6.6% transaction fee for buyers. Is that is that still right? 
Yeah, yeah. The three point three that's in trade. That's in that's in credits. Yeah. That's not that's not cash. So the only cash transaction fee is the six point six percent cash transaction fee. And how do you collect that? On per on purchases. And how do you collect that? Uh, yeah. So so now what the we've, again the past we've um, been collecting off the credit cards. You know, the month right, after, for example, at the end of the month, send them a statement, uh, end of month, do the collection, that sort of thing. Okay, but so again, new, members, that has, new members give you the credit card details when they join and then you just take the fees from that. Yeah, pr okay. primarily, yes. Yeah. So, but that again has proven uh, fraught with danger because a lot of them, you know, credit cards have expiry dates. They forget, they yeah, give us yeah, debit yeah, cards, yeah. not credit cards. So there's no credit, go there, credit, credit card bounces, that sort of thing. So we've overcome those problems now so we don't give any more cash like that the cash now gets done up front so when they go to do the transaction they put their credit it works out the 6.6 percent cash fee put their credit card in and process it and that processes the transaction along with their 6.6 percent okay, cash fee so what why did so you there's no the... more debt collection charges okay why did it's all you, gone um... now too why didn't you take the buyer's fee in trade credit? Um, we're happy to do that in trade. Happy, happy to do the buy, the purchaser. The purchaser pays cash fee because we need a cash fee to run the system for a start. That's our, our, our only cash fee okay. is the transaction fee. Okay. And do you, yeah. you get, you can, as a, as a business, you can get referral fees, can't you, from, from the trades? Uh, yes. Business? From the from the yep. transaction fees of businesses you introduce into trade swap, exactly. Um, yes. How, how much are the referral fees? Okay, so the so the only cash collection that the company gets is the cash transaction fee. Yeah. So this apart from the one-off joining fee. So you got your one-off joining fee, but then the the transaction fees that one point that the transaction fee is the six point six percent on purchases only. Yeah. Okay? So then we have a cashback system whereby if you refer somebody, you can then get 50% of all those of all their fees. They 50%, generate. 50%. 50%. You get half of those fees. Yeah. So on the joining fee, you get 55 cash and 55 trade credited straight to your account. And then you get 50% of their transaction fees, either the 3.3% 3, 3 trade in sales or the 6.6% cash in yeah, is there transaction fee the point three and the point six they are our gst they are government taxes added on to the trend added on to the the fee structure right so the fees the fees come from a percentage of the traction fees of the transaction fees of the businesses you refer rather yes. than being generated from some central account so it's correct it's, correct so it's, so it's not going to cause inflation in the system correct so, so it, if it, they, pays, if it they... pays for itself Correct. Exactly right. Yes, the fees pay for themselves. So if there's no transactions, that's fine. If the trader does zero transactions for a for a month, they will get charged a twenty dollars trade fee. If there's zero transactions, we've only just implemented that to try right. to stimulate okay. more trading and to cover the uh, sales, administration, customer service roles that we have as far as you know, helping customers to do more. And so the, referral fees, that. the referral fees, are they a good incentive? Is that, is that the biggest sort of um, source of, of new yeah, It of is. New Look, some, businesses? some people, some sole traders, uh, single operators do take it on and refer others. Business owners don't tend to because they're focused on their own business. But then others have taken it on and ran with it as far as then gone and refer others. And because it's 50% on the first level, if their trader goes and refers another trader, then they'll get the 50, but that initial one gets 10%. So it goes down five levels. It's doesn't a multi-level. Doesn't that eat up all your fees? Like. Doesn't that eat up all so, your right, fees? 70% of all the fees get 70 given 70% of all your fees, okay. 70% goes back to the membership base. I and that it's way it's an encouragement. It's an encouragement for the, those referring traders to look after traders yeah and keep everybody happy yeah because yeah, yeah, everyone yeah. has a slice of the pie i think there's a one second sort of um uh, gap between between us so uh, we, we're talking over over each other but that's we'll try and get used to it 
So, um, okay. so some networks we've talk, talked with, um, they, they show businesses on their website and, and some show goods and services, but you show both, don't you? We show both, yes. We, we, we show all our traders are there without having to log in. Uh, we find that most other trade exchanges, most credit common companies, you have to log in to see membership bases. Ours is, we've got nothing to hide. So, yeah. uh, you know, we don't tend to lose members from that. We've got nothing to fear if they do or whatever. I'm so, yeah, we have no requirement to log in. I noticed that, yeah, there's, there's um, you know, some of the entries are businesses. And they yep. say, this is, this is the name of our business. We provide these, this, these services. And some of the some of the entries are the products and services themselves. So they'll say, yep. you know, somebody will say, "Well, I've got this this car for sale," and, yep. uh, and another entry will be um, a car showroom, say. Um, yep. So th does that not confuse people? You know, some of the entries are businesses, and some of the entries entries are products. And not services. really, because it's just like a um, a trading post or a you know, a trading post eBay or guess, Facebook yeah. type of thing where people can advertise services or items, whatever they wish. That's the yeah, whole yeah. thing is it? yeah. And can, you, um, I tell people, got a fridge, sort of, um, got a car. Your homepage is sort of no nonsense, isn't it? You, you've got lots of categories and you go straight into showing visitors what's on offer. Um, and that's probably a good idea, isn't it? It's that, I mean, that's what people are interested in after all. Yeah, well, that's it. We, we don't want them to waste time. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of other companies that you need several clicks. You got to go here, you got to go there, go here before you actually get what you want. It makes sense. Whereas with ours, we just say you just want to get in and get what you want. Go there and quickly find it. How did you decide what the categories? How did you decide decide what the categories are on the homepage? Oh, we just look at all the other sites. <laughs> it's very simple. The most common categories available on, on all your other sites is what people want. Let, let them gotcha. do it for you. We're not here to reinvent the wheel. Gotcha. How did you find out about mutual credit, stroke, barter trade in the first place? Uh, I threw, over the years, got involved with Matthew Slater. Oh, you know, met, Matthew yeah, Slater. Matthew, okay. Yeah, I was introduced to Matthew Slater. Uh, I've met Matthew. Yeah. Where did you meet him? Uh, uh, I, in Melbourne. Oh, his, his mom lives in Australia, doesn't she? Yeah, his mum lives in Bendigo. Yeah, so I oh, took I, him I back to his, <laughs> Yeah, I took him to his, his mother's place in Bendigo. Yeah, and Matthew also stayed at my place as well. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So, um, have, you, have you tried other ways of, of charging fees? We, um, we, ha we ha have uh, in the past had a, um, so we've we had in the past a, um, a cash fee both sides and that, but they were too close to what the others had not, I felt uncomfortable. So I don't like to charge unnecessary fees. <laughs> I've only basically ran the system for ourselves and a few others that have been involved in it. So we've only taken what we've needed to run the company with and rather you, than. Yeah. Do you get things for yourself in, um, in, in credits in, in, through, through mutual credit? Um, yeah. So I, um, I use it and I encourage staff and others to do exactly the same, to use it as much as possible because self-interest uh, it breeds success as far as something like this because you're going to make it work. You're going to make it work for yourself. As it yeah. works for yourself, it'll work for others uh -huh. as well. So I'm a high user of the system. So do you, are, you, are, you, are you one big network or are you, um, do you have nodes? Do you have little, little smaller networks within TradeSwap? Uh, no, I'd say we're one big network. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, how do you... And, how do you build trust? How do you know you can trust new businesses when they join? Uh, well, n now, um, well, you sort of don't. You sort of hope for the best. But uh, but now it has been a trust, you know, a real trust in factor. <laughs> Most times it's worked out okay. Only a few cases it hasn't, whereby, you know, people haven't traded back through their overdrafts. Uh, and that puts a, a penalty on the system. And what uh, happens then? How do you deal with that? Well, now what we well in the past what we've had to do is 
as we as the owners of the company and, and the management have had to soak up those deficits ourselves through the trade. That's why we've, we've got that 3% trade fee on sales. We use that primarily as like a debt reserve yeah. to soak up those debts and bad debts in the system, that sort of thing. And so we don't put a, um, a hemorrhage on the, on the credits in the system. You You've never taken people traders. to court. You've never taken people to who've defaulted. Well, we, we, we've done that in the past a few times, and uh, yeah, unfortunately, that's that's the case. What that's that's as a last resort, definitely as a last resort. Yeah, yeah. But we tend to, I I tend to put a lot back into the system. I put a lot more into the system than than what I take out of it. Mm -hmm. Oh, you were so, telling me what kind of things that you've got yourself from the system. Yeah. Well. Okay. So. I use, well, for example, the chair I'm sitting on and the table I'm using and the laptop I'm using there while I'm trade. My glasses, my glasses no. are on trade. My teeth are on trade. No. So my fridge, my fridge is on trade. So you've got but, dentists, you've got dentists in the, and opticians yeah, in the, in the system. Yeah, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, well, even, even the house I'm in no. was because I, I bought a house using trade credits, uh, Back in 2008, I think. Hang it on, was. hang on. You bought a house using using yes. music credit. Yeah, yeah. So we do a lot of property on trade using trade credits. A hundred percent trade credit. Not a hundred percent. Ten, twenty percent. All right, okay. Yeah, ten, twenty percent, and that's wow. a deposit. So that gives you the deposit to buy a property, whereas a lot of people can't buy the get into a property real estate market because they don't have the deposits. Yeah, 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 yeah. We can use the trade credits to do that, and and that was my case. So, yeah. so do so, you do you do a lot of brokering? I mean, do you do you look for trading loops and contact businesses? All the time. All, all the, the time. time. Yes. What would happen if you didn't do the brokering? Would it just sort of grind to a halt? Do you think? Do, do you need? Uh, it does. It doesn't. It doesn't. You tend to find that some traders naturally just keep doing it themselves because they also love the concept, so they keep going. But yeah, real other traders will just drop off and forget about it and that sort of thing. Can members trade in cash through your system as well as mutual credit or a mix of the they two? They can, but the cash the cash transactions doesn't have anything to do with us. Okay, so they just do that separately themselves. Okay. How far do you let people go into debit? How do you work that out? Oh, well, it depends on the traders. just depends on the traders so and the security case case they have to thing, offer. And it's a case by case. Case so by case. Again, yeah. you're probably hands-on and you just, you just look at each business in Correct. turn. Correct. Right, okay. Case by case. Yes, definitely. So what, case by case, because some businesses have zero capacity to pay it back. Others have yeah. a great capacity to pay it back. So a dentist, for example, has can turn over you know, ten thousand dollars in a month. Mm -hmm. uh, someone who does babysitting can turn over ten thousand dollars in ten years. Mm -hmm. So, so it just depends upon upon the traders. Yeah, I guess you're small enough for you to have a hands-on approach to. Yeah, definitely, business, you can yeah. see each. Yeah, exactly, to see each one. So um, I just want to talk about COVID and the lockdown. Um, what's happening to your members in the current economic climate? Generally speaking, we've found a, uh, a, quite an increase in business. Oh, oh right. And okay. So, so, so we have, yeah, well, people are home more. Uh, we've, the biggest thing, strangely enough, is cleaners, house cleaners. That's been the biggest single request, house cleaners and handyman services. They're not supposed to go fact. into people's houses, though, are they? Fact, fact, fact. Well, but that they are anyway. Fact. House cleaners, house cleaners, and handyman services has been the biggest demand. That's yeah. exactly the, what what people are not supposed to be doing. Yeah, well, that's that's exactly right. But that's exactly what's happened. Is oh that, my God. Um, yeah, that that's a fact. Yeah, handyman services get everyone's at home getting things done, so they want the houses clean, windows done, gutters done, gardens done, all that sort of thing, and all the odd jobs fixed up. They're the things that have been happening. By other people. Out, around the corner from us is a big Bunnings store. Big hardware, you know. Oh, Bunnings, a big what? You know? A big Bunnings. It's called Bunnings. It's a, a big hardware store. Oh, right, okay. Ha ha home hardware. The queues out there, car park, chocker block. I'm just trying to work out uh, how much your trade has uh, increased because of lockdown. Probably uh, three times. It's trebled? Yes. Good Lord, yeah. because I was, I was talking to somebody who said that when, um, when the economy shrinks, uh, mutual credit trade shrinks as well, but that's not the case for you. No, no, our, 
our industry has been built on recessions. Yes, of course. Sardex in Sardinia started in 2009. You had the Via yeah. Bank in Switzerland started in 1934. Yeah, so late 80s, our business, late 80s, you know, things that I was doing. And um, before I got formally involved with the formal exchanges, um, I noticed it. But then in the early 90s, again, mid 90s, we, the, our economy was quite tight. That's when our industry really grew. That's when so, Barter Card, Barter Bank, you know, all the other... So you were saying that um, if we're trying to start new mutual credit clubs in the UK now, it's probably the best time, the best time we could possibly yeah, be doing Yeah, well, it. people don't have the cash. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, they yeah. can keep trading. So don't, they've got, people have got uh, spare time and capacity and they've got spare produce as far as their business goes. They can trade it. So, now, I mean, there's no so cash in the market. Are the, are the effects of the lockdown really hitting home though yet? Or are there other factors? I mean, are the other are banks still lending as, or are the banks still lending? The banks are still lending, but they're very wary of who they're lending to yeah, yeah, and yeah, the yeah. jobs that, and the jobs that they have. So, if, if you're involved with air, you know, like, um, travel industry, uh, any industry that's related to the COVID for, like travel, you know, there's no the travel industry shut down virtually. So uh, I say is, because there's, there's no imports. So do you think the, the extra business? Do you think the extra business is entirely to do with, do with recession, or are you doing anything different? Now, every time the economy gets tired in recession, we grow. So you think it's entirely down to the recession? Okay. Every time, every time the business when when business is good, the economy is really good. We we die, and we grow well, again when, when times are tough. That's, so, that is our history. That's that's been. Because when the economy is good and flying, people don't have time to trade. They're not interested in trade. They have enough cash. And they've got cash. Cash yeah. is king. Yeah, they yeah, don't yeah. have time. They're not worried about barter. They've got cash coming in. Oh, too certain. many cash jobs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too many so, cash jobs. They don't have time for this barter business. Yeah. So that's very encouraging for us. <laughs> I mean, it's a bad yeah. thing because of the recession, but it's, it's encouraging that, you know, it yeah, tends to it's a fact. Uh, boost it's a fact. mutual That's why it's always gone. It's still the case today. Um, so some of these larger barter schemes, uh, they charge quite a lot. You know, why do why do you think businesses pay so much for the service? It seems incredible. Some of the, some of the I have to be honest and say, well, barter card, to my knowledge, has been the highest in fees, but they've also done the best job. They have grown to a phenomenal size company. They have. So it's customer. They've, they've put their customer service in, and they put good customer service rules in that in to their credit. So there was, used to be 20 different trade exchanges in Australia at one stage. 20. 20. Really? In, in 99, back in 1999, there was 20. Well, did Barter now, Card put them all out of business? Well, a prime, I wouldn't say that. Most times the owners put themselves out of business. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, 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 the Barter Card has always been the highest in fees. Some of the fees. But are quite, they have survived and they have grown. Because the they've given customer high. service. Yeah, but Cust I mean, I just wondered that it, it's, it seems to be that, that businesses will pay quite a lot for, for you know, moneyless trade. Customer and, and service, that a lot of them will pay for good customer service, which okay. is what it is. And, okay. and Barter Card has provided the best in customer service and, and operation facility, all that sort of thing, okay. and what they've provided. So, so if you were going to give credit. us any advice, if you're going to give us any advice, if we're going to start mutual credit clubs in this country, uh, what would your what would be the best advice that you could give us? Call your customers. Call your customers. Okay. Yeah. Keep, call your ask ask them what ask them what they want. So yeah, I was telling I was saying earlier that we're uh, building mutual credit clubs in this country, which are going to be able to link together and trade with each other in a in a federation, and eventually that's going to go global into the into the credit commons. Uh, can we talk to you again then, with a view to trade swap being in the in the global yeah, network? Yeah, for for sure, L love to. I mean, our philosophy is to encapsulate the world, get the world on trade. Any more final thoughts? Anything else you'd like to say to people? Do it. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. That's fair don't enough. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Don't theorize it. Do yeah. it. That's 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 a very good point. That's exactly what we're talking about right it's, now. It's very it's very simple. Remember, it's still the oldest economic transactional system in the it world. It is. It is. People don't realise that. It's been great talking with you. Right. Good I'll luck. Speak, speak to you again soon. Good luck, Lawrence. Okay. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.